The next section for TA Southbounders is the town of Methin to the town of Lake Tekapo. And strap in because this video, one, is going to be long just because of the sheer amount of miles, but also it is very heavy with logistics and kind of obstacles along the way. So when you leave the town of Methvin, it is a harder hitch out. We did try our hand for the first hour, but there's really not a whole lot of traffic leaving that town on a given day. So you may end up having to walk those seven to eight miles back to the official alternate. Um, you may also get lucky, but I would not just rely on a hitch. It is a quieter road. So depending on what you do, you'll end up getting back towards the alternate. There's this little shelter or like bus stop area that if it, you time it for lunch, you can take a nice lunch in there. But this is the official alternate. Um, it's the continuation of the alternate around the Rakaia River. Um, again, some people do decide to shuttle this. We decided to walk it. It comes down to your preference, your prerogative. So it's all road walk this day, depending on your miles, of course. So it is very flat road. You're just kind of on the banks of the river. There's not a whole lot of elevational change along the road. Highly recommend bringing more water than not. It is dry, 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 dry until the last mile or two to three miles um, when you reconnect with the official TA. A lot of farms along the way, a lot of farm friendly dogs. Um, this really made it worth it for us to do the entire alternate. Give us a doggo and we will walk 30, 40 miles any given day. Um, give us four doggos, we'll, we'll up that mileage. Anyway, it's informational, not jokes. So the road continues on and it's just really flat as I did describe. You can hold a very standard pace, three miles, three and a half, four, just very dependent on what you want to do with it. You could jog it if that is your prerogative. Again, depends on your preference. This is the Rakaia River and you get better views along this side of the road than the other side. So when we were walking this road, we were scoping it out and again, from our perspective, it is a braided river, so it looked like we could have possibly picked channels to get across it. Highly recommend against it. Cannot stress that enough. 99.9% .9 of people do not ford that river, so use your best judgment. Be safe out there. So you continue the road, mostly farms, as I said. There is not water along this route for a long time, so be very prepared for that. I did talk about that. You do start getting into these cliff bands the last two or three miles to connect back into the official TA. And this is where really your first water is accessible. It's kind of getting filtered out of that rock. Again, use your own preference here, opinion on whether or not to filter that water. And you just get broad sweeping views. It's very gorgeous for a road walk, very quiet, like nobody goes up those roads. So this is the official TA. You reconnect into it, um, pat yourself on the back. Either way, if you forded the river, got a shuttle around, walked it, you're back on the official TA. So when you rejoin the official TA, you almost instantly start a climb. And the climb is a few thousand feet. And it's graded initially pretty easy, but then it does to get steeper near the top. The first few miles from that TA sign itself um, is thicker track. And don't get too discouraged along this portion of track because it's not going to remain this way. But that first mile, two miles in there, a um, little bit of kind of cross country with those orange posts because there's no beaten down single track and you're just very in thick brush. But eventually it does open up into this portion and it's pretty much two track the rest of the way up to the top of the climb and even farther down ultimately down that trail and this i kept in here because of that bull you are in a bull's field so just be aware about that give him his space um be respectful and yeah just give the bullet space so this is the climb i was talking about you came down all the way from that valley you can see the rakaya river in the distance really gorgeous up here epically epically gorgeous so this is the official top um, and the official top, there's no really signpost. It's just you peek out and you hit this kind of saddle where you have a couple rolling hills for a little bit. Um, it is a pseudo two track um, kind of cross country, as you see here. There's two track underneath Magpie's footsteps right here. It's just harder to see with those tussocks. But then it opens up into a really well paved two track or well beaten down two track somehow. Don't know. But there's these privies and the first shelter you hit is this kind of A-frame shelter. Again, it's only a two bunker. It's about four to five miles from where the official TA picks back up at the entrance to the Rakaia River or where that road started. So if you get there early in the day, you can push up that climb and have a little shelter at the end of there. Water is abundant through here, at least for this first portion of this section. Um, this day, you have some elevational changes, but being on two track that first climb of the day, you can hold a pretty standard climbing pace. And then it kind of drops down into these valleys down by the river floor. Every so often you go along the river bank, but the track itself is pretty good through here. Um, it fluctuates as any track does in New Zealand, but overall the flavor of the track is pretty consistently good until you hit the hut that I'm pointing at right now. This is Commons Hut. 
And if you thought you were really moving at a good clip today, this is where your pace will drastically change. Um, nice hut. It kind of has standard uh, facilities. It has some water, camping outside, bunks. A little bit on the older side, but if you need to stay there, that's your preference. This is where your miles change. The next river. It is not a nice riverbed with a two-track. It's a beautiful riverbed, but the track quality is almost non-existent. You are fording back and forth between that river from bank to bank to bank, ultimately the entire time you're in that riverbed. Really not any track. You aim for those orange posts that I've talked about prior, and you just pick what side of the riverbed you want to be on, ultimately. Uh, there's no beaten down track. Again, I didn't see any. I don't think any other hikers found any. It can't be built into the sides because of just all this washout. Sometimes you're just wading directly in the river, and you got to be okay with that. Your pace will take a hit. I think we were doing almost a mile per hour right above it or right below it in that ballpark though so if you were really moving good and anticipating your miles were just gonna link up perfectly this is a big hazard zone it could flood i see the potential of that um and it does have that information if you want to google that um around that commons hut area so just be very aware about that and i kept these scenes long just to show you the structure of this cross country it's a short chunk as i said about three miles but it is consistently difficult in the sense of having to watch where your footfalls go, crossing those river, that river back and forth, back and forth. It is very long. <laughs> so once you finish that riverbed, you will start an ascent and the river kind of braids itself or junctions. So you're getting out of that deeper pockets of river and more into these like feeder streams themselves. And ultimately you'll climb out of that as well and start your ultimate ascent to the next saddle. And this ascent is steeper than your previous one at least in my opinion and it also the footfalls are a little more difficult because that scene i just shot those tussocks are going to start really this is where the tussocks on the south island for south bounders really start to begin in like their extremity if that makes sense you've experienced them in the past if you've gotten to this point but the tussocks start to get more and more involved in your daily hike at this point um and you'll see that in future videos so that was the pass or saddle and you drop down the backside really nice initially <laughs> so soak that in until it becomes tussocks and these tussocks overall it looks pretty easy at least from this viewpoint to walk on them but it's just they're so uneven and slippery and they overhang the trail that they catch your feet and it will impact your pace very slow going um not very slow but slower than a regular quote-unquote downhill would take you and you just keep going down the tussock fields and get ready for more and more and more of them. Um, make them your friend because if not, they will be a deathly enemy. So you get to the bottom and you join this next river valley. There's a hut initially at the bottom called Double Hut. It's pretty far off the trail, tucked into those little ridges over there. So if you do decide to go there, it is about half mile, 0.6 off trail. If you decide to continue on, this is where the track changes again into good two track or a track that you can actually hold a pace on again after those tussocks and that river river valley um, prior so it's really flat not a whole lot of elevational change after that last saddle and you can really just kind of cruise along here there is another hut um, after you hit these lakes water does become more of an issue so a few scenes ago you saw magpie filling up just check your water and be aware that water is more of an issue in this river valley even though it's a river valley it's pretty dry and this is where another hut is directly behind our tent so if you stay here, you have a few options this following day. Um, there is a car park about 20 miles, a little bit less away from that hut slash campsite that some hikers decide to get a hitch around the Rangitata River. If you were planning on fording the river, I would build in more time than not because it is a longer ford than you anticipate. So the morning miles, I kept that a little short in there because it's mostly that two track step in. You do have this one little climb that a few scenes ago that you go up and over this shoulder, but it's really your only climb for the majority of the day, or at least steep climb for the majority of the day. You get into more of the two track and the two track ultimately just leads you into more two track with broad sweeping views of the valley. Again, recommend filling up at the water sources at either the huts or some of those creeks because water is a little tricky in these sections unless you want to drink from lakes that are off trail. So as I said, the two track leads into this more defined gravel track, um, even has a tail or a sign, which is nice. And this gravel track will lead you for a few miles across a bridge um, by beautiful lakes. 
into the next portion of trail. Once you get across Buick's Bridge, this is really when you got to start looking because the trail detours off very quickly to the right. And this is the sign. There is a sign there, but it's a very sharp turn. So just be aware. And when you detour off, you're ultimately climbing up to Paddle Creek. Paddle Creek is like your first, I would consider, good water in a while. So fill up here. This is Paddle Creek. There is some camp spots along here that you can camp if your miles link up. If not, and you continue pushing on, you do have more of a gradual ascent, ultimately to this kind of unnamed saddle. And the ascent, it's on two track. Every so often it has like that cross country feel to it through tussocks but ultimately the track quality is pretty standard and this lake will signify the very top of your climb um, again very gradual ascent you can hold a standard pace on that and you'll drop down the backside and here's when the options start coming into play so as you drop down this backside you do have the option of going into Lake Clearwater. It's a very limited amenities town. Here's the sign right here. There's a couple junctions off that you can go there, um, but there is service there, and it's just a limited service town, as in the fact that it's staying places, and I don't know if they ha have a grocery store. So when you continue on, you just keep following those orange posts, and those orange posts will ultimately lead you into the Rakaka River. Um, excuse me, the, the Rangatata River. Um, there's multiple rivers. So this river, this is kind of the floodplain off of it. And you do have a more steeply descent down into there. That's really kind of the only mileage up till that point that really hampers your pace. That last mile into this riverbed or creek bed is more chunky, um, just slower going. So you hit the Rangatata River. So there's also a car park here that I did not film called Part Potts Car Park. And you can coordinate a ride with a shuttle company around the river if you're not feeling comfortable fording the Rangatata. If you are co comfortable fording it, you have about a mile or two of kind of the floodplain until you hit the first braided piece of the river. And the first braided piece of the river is by far the hardest. So yeah, as you can see, the ladies were walking down the river bank. I forded at a place that was deeper than I would have preferred. It's very quick moving water. It's not necessarily too deep. Where I forded was hip high and where the ladies forded, it was about knee high. But it is just very, very swift. So be careful, check the river conditions, and do what makes you comfortable. You have more fords, but honestly that first one was kind of the big hurdle. The rest of the fords get anywhere from shin high to right below knee high, and they're not moving nearly as quickly. If you get across that first braid, um, I don't want to put any false information out here, but if you get across that first braid, um, you're almost guaranteed to be good to go. Again, river conditions change all the time. Please check the conditions before going for it. So if you get across the Rangatata, it is kind of those quote-unquote mystery miles that I've mentioned in New Zealand. Um, forward momentum from one end Potts Car Park to the next piece of track is like only considered quote-unquote one trail mile. It's anywhere in the ballpark of three to four. Um, it will take you upwards of an hour and a half to get across. Don't cross that bridge. It is the wrong direction. I wanted to keep that scene in there because that's where many people shoot for because they can see it on the horizon when you're going cross country. But don't shoot for that. Find this gate that's off to the left. Um, it doesn't really have much signage in there to announce when you're getting back into the track but that gate is the sign um, so just be very cognizant and be aware with your maps we camped um, a little into the track into the bush creek track itself and there are better spots it's super sandy as you see we put a lot of rocks on our tent to hold it down very windy through here so if you're feeling for a better camp um, just find a better wind block there's a lot of flat areas that you can pitch a tent so if you decide to leave this next day from here um, it's going to be a very flavorful day a lot of big major points happen today. Um, the highest point along the TA and just really cool riverbed. So the first riverbed you have to contend with is called Bush Stream. And it's called a stream, but it feels more like a river. There are a lot of wide channels, really deep fords, and you just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Your pace will take a hit in here, anywhere from that mile per hour to two mile per hour. I don't think we went as slow as a mile per hour, but just build in extra time because it is very slow. As you can see, I just kept many scenes of back and forth, back and forth across the river. There are a couple like seeps. Um, I don't want to call it a spring, but if you don't want to drink that creek water, there are other places along there to access water. If you feel comfortable with the water itself, just filter, drink it unfiltered, whatever you do prefer. I kept these scenes in here because it just gave me amusement, like I said, to show you how many times you cross that river or stream. <laughs> it feels like a river. It is a lot. Um, some people actually qualified it as more difficult than the Rangatata. We didn't feel that way. It was just more consistent and long. So you fluctuate riverbed. There's that little piece of track I showed you. That's really the only kind of forced track you have. And it was just weirdly on a bank, but you fluctuate until this point. At this point, you also have two options. I'm pointing to the left where the official trail goes, but you have a low water option that goes down to this right. Um, I'm pointing to the left again and right. 
The low water option puts you more in the bush stream and it puts you through deeper fords. I would not recommend doing this if there's been any flooding recently because there were far deeper pockets along here. Again, we felt comfortable doing it um, because the, the alternative, the official route, puts you through um, steep graded stuff that has some landslides that are act not active but that have happened in the past. So once you connect back into official trail, you have this long climb, very prolonged climb. You're going to be doing a lot of climbing this day. And this climbing will ultimately bring you up to a hut. And this is the hut here. And it's just gorgeous this entire day. Um, from the riverbed to the climbs, everywhere around you is just so scenic this day. By far one of the highlights of the TA is this section from the Rangatata River onwards. This is the inside of the hut. A lot of hikers do decide to stay here because it's the first hut outside of the Rangatata River. But again, it comes down to your opinion. You can fit anywhere from six to eight folks on the bunks. Extra in case it's, extra, it's um, packed. So when you decide to leave that hut, you end up going gradually up until the last mile or two is when it really gets steep. It goes through a lot of these tussocks. Again, those orange posts are your best friend on the TA. There you, there you see. Um, just very tussocky fielded stuff that makes your pace go slower. And you get to the top, unnamed saddle, really gorgeous all the way around. As I've said, I kept this scene super long just to show you. I haven't done a whole lot of 360s in this film series, but like everywhere you look when you're on top of a saddle, especially on the South Island of New Zealand, you're just going to be getting hit with beautiful 360 degree views. And it's just really gorgeous. There's that orange post I mentioned. <laughs> really, orange posts are your best friend on the South Island. So when you leave the top of this saddle, you'll descend ultimately into this next valley that you can see to Magpie's left. There is water accessible right here at the bottom. And there's a nice little kind of spot to take a break, um, take lunch, grab some water, whatever have you. These next miles actually are some of the more difficult of the day. They're just tussock filled. And when I mean tussock filled, it's just tussock, tussock, tussock. I didn't really get, get good, gr great clips of said tussock fields, um, but they're just very slow going. Sometimes the trail peters out. Sometimes it just disappears completely and you're going cross country from that orange post to orange post. It fluctuates heavily. Here's when it disappeared and you're just kind of walking through tussocks. So this pace, even though it's quote unquote flat-ish, there are those micro ups and downs. It will take longer than you expect. That's a reoccurring theme with the TA. <laughs> so there's another hut called Stone Hut here. Again, your preference if you want to stay there. There's water accessible right down the back side. This is where the stream was. And if you go past that hut, many people go to the next hut called Royal Hut. And again, it's tussocky. You're along that river valley. Pace is going to get slowed down a little bit. But ultimately, it is quote unquote flat. <laughs> so Royal Hut is behind me. Um, I didn't get a big piece of film of it because there were a lot of folks there and I wanted to be polite and I apologize it's in the future here so but Royal Hut is the hut that many people shoot for and it is a bigger hut it can fit many folks there it is on the left side of your screen there if you decided to leave Royal Hut you have a steep ascent up to the next pass which is the highest point on the TA called Stag Saddle the ascent the first mile I thought was the hardest because it was that tussock field that slowed your pace once you get into this more rock, you can kind of hold a standard pace. A lot of springs along the way, a lot of streams, a lot of creeks. Water is really not an issue this day. I'm pointing back to where we came from. That was the valley where Royal Hut was. And now I'm about to point to where the saddle is tucked in that U or V of that mountain right there. Um, pretty standard climb. It is steep. Um, you will be breathing heavy. Uh, I definitely was, but just gorgeous up there. I'm pointing right now where the orange markers are i was following the gpx line and as i've 22 20 23 season the gpx line was wrong that last half mile up so just stay aware follow those orange markers because they will be your friends stag saddle top, tallest point on the ta congratulate yourself take a photo take a video um really cool spot if you were planning on camping at the saddle proper there's like one kind of wind shelter spot but it's very rocky the most legitimate camp spot or like easy accessible camp spot is down by that lake that I just showed you a second ago and I'm going to show you here. Um, right by this lake there's a beautiful camp spot that you can camp at. I'm pointing at the TA route which is still technically considered the unofficial route but the map systems had you up there. So this following day many people go up to the ridgeline walk. Um, the ridgeline walk is kind of assumed to be the official part, even though it's still quote unquote unofficial. We started off the morning descending along the quote unquote official route with those orange markers, but we quickly realized the official route was tussock filled, very slow going, and it was just, we weren't feeling it. So we ended up bushwhacking back cross country up to the ridgeline and thank 
god we did because it was well worth it cannot recommend enough one just going to the ridge line for the views themselves but also just because the bottom route ultimately will be slower it's just not great trail down there so cannot recommend enough doing the ridge line walk it's actually fantastic trail once you get up there we're still bushwhacking in these scenes to get back up to the ridge line itself um, we we definitely had to do more elevation this day because of our early morning mistake so this is the ridge line like i said those scenes are just gorgeous we had it a very misty morning so we didn't get those broad sweeping views of the lake but ultimately it was still very very gorgeous up there and as you can see the track to magpies right there it's really cut in well we actually ended up seeing motorbikes up here somehow so that tells you the quality of the track you can really hold a standard pace on it um, and it's not a whole lot of elevation it's very gradually descending for southbounders very gradually ascending for northbounders and there's that 360 again it's just lake tekapo as you're approaching it is just a gorgeous gorgeous approach um, this is more of that ridgeline track and again the official tracks to the left down in the valley where you saw magpie and we didn't see much signage down there at all so it comes down to your personal preference opinion here but cannot recommend the ridgeline track strongly enough um, from the official saddle stag saddle you will have to also kind of do cross country to it but you're used to that at this point you still connect back into the official track those orange posts become your guiding guided line again and you descend more tussock fields oh joy so You'll hit an arrow that points your way, and you're ultimately approaching this very old hut. I think it was built in the 1800s, which is really cool just for the historical value. I'm pointing at the creek and ultimately the route that goes down there. This is the sign of the official route behind it, and yeah, as you saw, there was no trail. So you just get those beautiful valley views with those mountaintops in there. And this is the hut I was mentioning. Very small, very old. It could fit four people, um, five if you're pushing it. So just pick your pace, pick your pick your place you want to camp and continue on. If you decide to leave that hut, you have one last steep climb of the day before you're smooth sailing. Um, you go through this river valley to approach it and it's just, it's easier quality track until that climb and you're just getting through beautiful, beautiful places. So this is the river that you cross right before the start of your ascent and here's the ascent very steeply up out of that river valley but it's very small it's um only anywhere from a half mile to a mile to ascend to the top of this tabletop where you get those broad sweeping views and you get easier trail now you're getting into the portion that the track just continues to get easier every moment that you take a step closer to lake tekapo every moment that track quality gets better you can hold a higher pace so if you're feeling for that shower laundry food you can hold a standard pace up here. We have heard about people that have camped on these tabletops. Again, it's very flat. Pick and choose where there's no tussock so you can pitch up your tent. There is water accessible up here. There's a stream you across before your final descent into the town. So if your miles link up that way and you want to get a little closer to town, there are places that you can pitch a tent or just cowboy camp or whatever you prefer. So this is the descent, final descent into Lake Tekapo and you just get those views of the lake, just crystal clear blue water, crystal clear blue skies, and just really gorgeous through there. So as you descend into the lake, get ready for a long road walk as you see here. The road walk into the town is about 10 miles and it is pretty dry. You cross one bridge with a creek, um, but besides that, I would recommend filling up water on the tabletop beforehand because it's a pretty dry road walk to get into Lake Tekapo. Very hot, very exposed, very flat though there's those micro ups and downs that i've mentioned before but overall the flavor of it is flat so i filmed these pieces of film because there's a lot of trails through lake tekapo since it's a very touristy area um so just be aware when you're following the trail that you're staying on the correct one there are, are a lot of twists and turns in that last mile to two into town so just check your maps and make sure you're staying on the correct trail that you want to be on and this will ultimately bring you into lake tekapo lake tekapo very big tourist town um, a lot of amenities the amenities like motels are pricier because it is such a popular town. There is a holiday park about a mile outside of town that you can camp at. Would recommend booking in advance. It gets very popular during the summer months. We got one of the last tent sites again. Um, and many people decide to do a bike from here. And I'll talk about the bike in a future video. But this is Lake Tekapo itself. It has a lot of restaurants. It has a four square grocery store. By far one of the best four squares that we had hit to this point. So you could actually do a full resupply out of here. And this is the holiday park. Um, again, a mile outside of town, off trail proper. But rest up, get some food in you, and get ready for that next section because 
it is going to be more of that river walk, more of those valleys, more of that flat stuff, and it ultimately will bring you into some really good stuff. So this is the camp spot. Thank you.